Ryan. Hi, um, I'm I'm reading The Fountainhead again. Um, it's uh, five years ago um, I read it, and I've reached this scene I'm I, I'm having trouble with. Um, and I, it's just a general question about uh, this scene where Rourke is working for Snite. Uh, he finally got this job. Um, he's you know after a period of time going around looking for employment. And Austin Heller's been shown into the drafting room and he sees the first rendition of his new home. Um, and he basically uh, tells Snite that he doesn't like it and that there's something missing. And, and Rourke is standing there next to this happening. And um, he, you know, after a while, after a time, he basically, you know, springs into action and uses his pencil to just <laughs> destroy this watercolor painting and redraw it in his vision. Yep. And the first time I read this scene, I, I mean, five years ago, I, I remember like, no, like, are you crazy? Why are you doing this? This is insane. <laughs> like you're, and, and, and I'm reading it now and I'm thinking, wow, he's, he's taking a huge risk, right? I mean, he's essentially putting his life on the line, not physically, but like his, his whole career on the line, taking this huge risk, still a calculated risk because the way, the way she writes it, he, he's listening to the conversation. He's, he's yep. waiting for his moment. And I, I'm just, I'm, it makes me think of different moments in my life. And even recently where it's like, these moments can just pass you by if you're not focused, if you're not engaged with what's going on around you. And I'm wondering if you have any, uh, experiences or you've reached this moment ever in your life where it was like you knew you had to take a risk it was big but based on your values and your life you you had basically no other choice you had to do it <laughs> um i mean pro uh, yeah i think that's a, yes i don't know if it was quite as dramatic as that's fiction, right? <laughs> yeah, it, but I can I can imagine that fiction happening in reality because it, you know it's it, it it kind of architecture kind of lends itself to that because you can kind of scribble some you know you can you kind of uh, but um uh, but 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 yes I mean um I, I, I problem is thinking of examples <laughs> um yeah that I, might be too difficult on the spot sorry yeah I mean there's a lot of decisions choices that i've made in my life as i said I've, I've had lots of careers that involve just you know uh, uh, going along a path that i didn't expect and and was different than what i expected and and that in, engaged risk whether it was um getting a phd which i did not expect i would ever do uh you know uh, um uh taking the job at the institute and giving up a career in finance um things like that uh or, or in a in a meeting pivoting uh, around a i don't know fundraising proposal to take in a sense of risk by saying hey what about this just feeding off of maybe some nuanced comment that somebody said and you go huh he seems interested in something else let me see if i can jump in and 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 steer him towards that uh, um in, in with the potential of alienating somebody um do you do you think that these sorts of moments are at a premium these days because our culture is really fearful of everything offending people uh saying the wrong thing putting yourself out there i mean couldn't things be just so much more dynamic and exciting if people were more willing to do this absolutely i mean there's no question about that you know there's still pockets of our culture where this kind of behavior still exists. And I think that, that that's what makes them dynamic. So this is why Silicon Valley is Silicon Valley. I don't think Silicon Valley today is quite like Silicon Valley 20, 30 years ago. I think even there, it has been somewhat, uh, uh, you know, uh, less of that dynamism exists. But yeah, wherever you find a place w which is dynamic, which is exciting, it's a place where people are taking risk. It's a place where people are are going out on a limb, experimenting, doing things, failing, rising up again. Those are the places. And wherever you see companies that are incredibly successful, 
it's people within those companies have been doing that. They've done that. There's no, just no other way to be succeed. And uh, so it still exists. It's just, you know, it, it should be in everything that we do, in every place that we go, in every type of industry. And sadly, it's more, it's narrower. It's, it's in particular places, in particular industries, in particular times. And it, it's not... It's not the entire culture. It's it's hard to imagine, I think, what it would be like to live in a culture like that. I mean, we haven't really had a culture like that since probably the 19th century or the early part of the 20th century. Even in the post-World War II America, there was already this built-in risk aversion, this built in in parts of in parts of America. Already the beginnings of cronyism and beginnings of welfare statism and entitlements and those things are starting to creep in. Uh, the last time the culture was completely go for it was probably pre World War One, and uh, or maybe in the nineteen twenties in America. Uh, but um, yeah, so thank yeah, you. And you, you coming to the United States was quite a leap. I mean, moving halfway around the world and leaving huge everything huge risk, huge yeah. risk, and and most uh, you know, and significant numbers of people went back to Europe because they didn't make it. People never talk about that. The, the number of Italians and Irish. So the only people who didn't go back to Europe were the Jews because they knew what would happen to them if they went back to Europe, right? They, 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 they had no way to go back to, but almost everybody else had somewhere to go back to. And, and only a certain percentage of people who came to America made it because it was risky. Risk means some people fail and some people did fail. And, and many of the people who failed went back. Uh, and, uh, and I think that that also in some ways engineered I, I mean it was a self-selection bias we have in america right in america the people who stayed were the people who were willing to continue to take on risk it was particularly back then right so it re it, it's a reinforcement mechanism the, the the failures or the people not willing to take on risk left and uh and and uh and you know didn't continue to be here so it it, it definitely self-reinforced itself through the 19th century and that's why i think america has done better than the rest of the world because it has more momentum from that attitude that, that is really lacking in the rest of the world. Uh, and, and they never had a 19th century like we did. In England, to some extent, some countries to some extent, but never quite on the scale that we did. All right, thanks, Ryan.